Good day on X-Play. Bond girls galore. In James Bond 007, everything or nothing. Motocross madness in MX Unleashed. And Silent Scope Complete puts a little sex in its slumber. I'll warm you up, handsome. It's game time. Won't you back that thing up? It's Adam Zessler and Morgan Webb. Hello and welcome to X-Play. On today's show, we have a review of the brand new James Bond game that features Pierce Brosnan, Shannon Elizabeth, and the ultra-sexy Day Judy Dench. Yeah, she has an Academy Award and she's still stooping to this and the sequel to Pitch Black. Go Judy. Plus, we have a game for the motocross fans. And because the video game industry doesn't have enough trouble from parents groups, a sniper game. Oh, I'm sure it's very tasteful. Plus, we take a look at Major League Baseball 2005. And, get this, we have Monte Python's very own John Cleese. Yes, John Holy Grail, Media of Life Cleese. Yay, this is so cool. But we kick things off with a brand new game featuring the secret agent the Japanese calls Kiss Kiss Bang Bang. Here's a review of James Bond 007, everything or nothing. Everything or Nothing has the distinction to being the first Bond game not based on a Bond movie. So, how much stock should you put in this Bond? Sorry. Everything or Nothing certainly could be a Bond movie. All the requirements are met. You have a supervillain well, plotting to take over the world, the latest inventions from Q-Lab. Strobe grenades. You can use them to blind your enemies. Brilliant. No shortage of beautiful women, and even a well-produced theme song complete with Bond girls. Some major acting talent is at work here, too. P.S. Brosnan is Bond, of course. Bond. Thank you. And Willem Dafoe lends his image and voice to evil mastermind Diavolo. A KGB agent so ruthless that the KGB itself tried to have him terminated. You'll also spot Shannon Elizabeth and Heidi Klum, as well as John Cleese portraying Q. Now, 007, do try to return this equipment in pristine condition. I'll do my best. That's what I was afraid of. Too bad the stiff character animation doesn't match up to the quality of the voice acting. It may not have everything, but it's infinitely better than nothing. EA has ceased attempting to emulate Goldeneye and move on into the third person realm. 007 has a wide range of guns and moves from which to choose, although the hand-to-hand -hand combat is a bit clunky. An auto-aim feature handles the gunplay and works well enough to make Bond a deadly enemy for the legions of unnamed cannon fodder soldiers he faces. He's such a badass that heat-seeking missiles only hurt him a little bit. Major Bond villains like Jaws here seem to pose more of a challenge for James's flying fists. Ouch! Those metal teeth are multi-purpose, apparently. You'll also spend time behind the wheel of several vehicles. This Porsche Cayenne Turbo is equipped with machine gun, missiles, and a cloaking device. And that's what I call security. The driving is actually one of the best parts of the game. The same cannot be said about the wonky helicopter. Tough to control, but to its credit, it is rock slide proof. Thinking like Bond is rewarded in everything or nothing. Here I brazenly rappel out of a broken window rather than taking the nearby stairs. What's that warm, tingly sensation I'm experiencing? I must be having a Bond moment. Sorry, gentlemen. I have a train to catch. Every stage has a few Bond moments scattered about. Think Kodak moments, but with more explosions. It may not be based on a Bond film, but it feels more like one than any of its predecessors. We give it a four out of five.
This is the best mom game since GoldenEye for the N64. Yeah, you know, for the first time, everything or nothing seems to get Bond right. Now, the previous games, even GoldenEye, were basically first-person shooters with a Bond license left on top. Now, this time around, it actually feels like you're Bond. And you're starring in your own movie. And, you know, speaking of stars, one of the big names featured in the Bond game is Monty Python's John Cleese. Yes, the man who created the Ministry of Silly Walk and starred in A Fish Called Wanda. And we are honored to have him on the show today, joining us by satellite. Mr. Cleese, welcome to X-Play. Hello, Adam and Morgan. How does doing the voice acting for Bond compare to playing Q on film? Well, the alarming thing about doing the game is you're so completely in the hands of the director because obviously if you're doing a movie, you've had the script for some weeks, sometimes even months, and you've talked to the director and then you're on the set and you can see the set and you're with the actors, some of whom have already played scenes before you came into the movie. Uh, the problem when you come to do a video game is you don't know any of that stuff. So the director, who's been obsessing about it for two or three years, he has to tell you exactly what the situation is. For example, is Bond in real danger? Or is it after an action sequence and more relaxed so that you're all, you know, it's a more bantering mood. So were you a Bond fan before you were joining the cast? I, I think like any series, like Monty Python, there were the great ones and the ones that were kind of okay and one or two that weren't so hot. And I think it's quite remarkable how cleverly in the last few movies they've kind of re-injected some of the original energy. I thought at one point it was all special effects, and I think what they're managing to do now is to get a little bit more of the character and humor back in, and I think a huge part of that was they finally got hold of Pierce, and of course they've been after him for years, as you know, and he was tied up with other things contractually. And I'm a huge fan of Pierce. I think he, I know people would be surprised, I actually think he's the best Bond, because for me he's the one most like the Bond in the original Ian Fleming books. And as the Romans used to say, de gustibus non disputandum est. There's very little point in discussing or arguing personal opinions, but that's my opinion. Yeah, most of the Romans I know say that as well. They, they they often say that. They often say that. What's it like having your body or your face scanned for the character in the game? Uh, really, all you have to do is stay still, so it's relatively easy. So you, uh, you go in and you sit on a, a little chair, and then this camera starts moving around you, and it's on like a sort of circular curtain rail. And I don't know, it probably takes about 40 seconds to go around. And what you have to do during that time is not kind of go... <laughs> or anything like that. So you just sit there looking as, as, as handsome as possible. Obviously, you're an expert at the handsome face. <laughs> I've, been studying, I've been studying Pierce for years. Isn't <laughs> Do you think it would be possible to make a comedy video game, a game where making people laugh is the goal? Well, the essence of comedy is timing and timing and pace. Just a few frames here and tighten a little bit there and take that one line out because it's redundant. And by keeping the pace very high, keeping it really sharp, it's funny. Now, I don't see how you can possibly do that in a video game but unless the guy playing the video game is a great comedian. Do you play games yourself? I used to. And then they just got too complicated for old people who were tired and stupid. But this, this Bond video is, is so good. I'm really amazed by it that I'm going to go back and plead with my daughter that I will give her large quantities of whatever it is that she wants if she will teach me how to play it. Now, there are once some Python games that are available on the PC. Do you think they could make some new money Python games in 3D? Yeah, yes, I think you could. I think you could do that. I, I, that, I think, would work. I think you could do a sort of a funny one. It's like the meaning of life was originally, uh, when we were planning, it was originally about a group of people uh, getting into Range Rovers and driving off into the hills somewhere very remote to find out what the meaning of life was. Remember, it was going to be sponsored by a tobacco company. And I thought that was a very funny premise. And I think you could do that, visiting all kinds of different gurus. You could make that quite funny. I'd better copyright that idea quickly. Or will you copyright it for me? Actually, I just wrote all that down, and I'll be pitching it myself with my name attached. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're about out of time here, but Mr. Cleese, thank you so much for spending this time with us, and thank you very much for the game idea. It was a pleasure talking to you, Adam and Morgan, whichever one you are. I, I'm Adam. I mean, yeah. I, I know Morgan could be a guy's name, but 
She really doesn't look like an Adam. Mm. But a big thank you to John Cleese for coming on the show. And stick around. We'll be back with more games. And later, I'll look at Major League Baseball 2005. Coming up, dirt, dirt, and more dirt in MX Unleashed. Still at level one after all these years, Adam Sessler and Morgan Webb. Welcome back to X-Play. We have a motocross game, and it's made by the developers behind the excellent Motocross Madness series. This game is the third in the MX series after MX 2002 and MX Superfly, which sadly did not feature a black flotation star, Ron O'Neill. Or a soundtrack by Curtis Mayfield. Sad. Anyway, the latest MX game has charged onto the scene with improved graphics and over 40 Supercross tracks. Here's a review of MX Unleashed. If you're tired of hunting down yet another lost nuclear weapon and don't want to go see what's up with your significant other just yet, why not try your hand at something macho and fun? Motocross. Admittedly, motocross titles have been mediocre attempts to cash in on the popularity of the challenging sport. But Rainbow Studio has put their dirt biking sites on the Xbox with MX Unleashed. And the results are surprisingly good. First off, Rainbow Studios understands that gamers want choice. Accordingly, MX Unleashed has included a ton of indoor and outdoor tracks and a surplus of racing bikes. Fans of Queer Eye for the Straight Guy will also enjoy the seemingly infinite number of uniforms and accessories. The only uniform missing we found being one with pads. Very thick pads. Ah! MX Unleashed looks great. Beautifully contoured landscapes complement the racing action perfectly, even if some of the ground textures have a slightly muddled look. There is a mix of desolate desert, indoor arenas, forests, and wintry landscapes. Rainbow Studios even got the sound right. The 50cc to the 500cc bike engines are the perfect solution to the nagging spouse in community property jurisdictions. Check out these freestyle modes. Stunt mode gives riders limited time to perform tricks, not unlike a classic skateboard or snowboard title. The machine mode is an exceptionally cool chance to race against other vehicles, like a monster truck. Second generation trailer dwellers can even switch to driving the truck itself. While these side events are nothing more than an amusing gimmick, they add much needed variety to the life of the hardcore gamer planning his 37th viewing of the Lord of the Rings trilogy. Even without live support, MX Unleashed is, by far, the best motocross game to hit the shelves in a long time. We like the sport, and actually love the game. It shouldn't surprise you that we give this baby a 4 out of 5. Very soon, we will be sneaking a peek at MLB 2005. But first, we have a light gun game for the Xbox. Hey, a light gun game for... Did you see the Xbox? Yes, there really is a light gun for the Xbox. And now it has a game. Silenscope complete, based in the arcade game. Here's our review. Given the vast array of Xbox light gun games, like House of the Dead 3 and... Um... There's, um... Okay, there's only House of the Dead 3. But now there's Silent Scope Complete for the Xbox. The game includes Silent Scope 1, 2, and 3, plus a modified version of 3. Of course, distinguishing between these games isn't too easy. Primarily, you watch a cutscene that's unintentionally hilarious. <laughs> My muscles are harder than steel. And then you bust caps in the dome of generic terrorists. <laughs> When it comes to how the game plays, there's nothing unheard of either. You find the anti-liberty representative, zoom in, and end a life. You're the greatest. Calm Situations down. sometimes vary with moving vehicle sequences that prove to be a real challenge. The result is some familiar arcade gameplay that proves to be quite entertaining and challenging. While the gameplay holds up, the production values are a little off. The game has a washed out look that can become intolerable if you have to crank up the brightness for the light gun. And confuse the enemies. 
The graphics themselves are also underwhelming. Detail is light and unrefined. As babies are wont to say, it just looks bleh. This is a result of the game's arcade history, but it would have been nice to see some punch up in the visual. Bleh. When it comes to the voice acting and writing, though, Silent Scope seems doomed from inception. I thought they'd just stand there and get shot. I told you I'll survive to have my revenge. Feel my reborn power. Yeah, after that, I kind of assumed that was his weak point. I'll warm you up, handsome. No, how about I just shoot you? Must Does it look like he'd rather be alone right now? Or they will get out to sea. That must be... Target captured. Silent Scope 3 is best suited for fans of the genre and those who have the Xbox like on and want a second game. You missed the shot. Otherwise, you'll be spending a bit for a gun and a game that's pretty dated and shows it all too clearly. A three out of five. You're the greatest. Oh, you're just saying that because I kill people. Now, you can use your original gun con for, for this game, or you can buy the Pelican Silent Scope Light Rifle for $50, but you can pretty much only use it for one thing, so it's not exactly cost-effective. Right, not to mention that the graphics in that game don't look so good. Bleh. Well, it's probably not a great idea to have a photorealistic sniper game. You know what? Yeah. That's creepy. A little bit. It's off. Unlike the Dreamcast, they're still alive and kicking. It's Adam Zessler and Morgan Webb. Yikes. <laughs> Welcome back to X-Play. We've returned with a sneak peek at Major League Baseball 2005 for the PlayStation 2. Sure was made by 989 Sports, but baseball is the one area of sports gaming that EA does not dominate, so the field is Open. And will MLB 2005 be the first great baseball game? Let's see when we preview MLB 2005. With spring training well underway, the console stickball season is upon us, which means a rematch of the efforts from Sega, EA Sports, and Acclaim. It also looks like 989 Sports will have a viable contender. MLB 2005 offers a broad selection of gameplay choices including quick play and exhibition options, as well as a 162-game season. Should be another great day for baseball, then. There's also a managerial simulation game and home run derby, plus franchise, career, and online play modes. The franchise mode expands the behind-the-scenes element from last year's game, allowing you to manage various aspects of your team's business affairs. Bump to the right side. 99's signature career mode not only puts the focus squarely on gameplay, but it centers on your own shot at becoming a major league player. In field fly rule, in effect, the batter's out. In terms of gameplay, 989 hasn't reinvented the wheel with its new interface. He's up with it. But it does offer three choices for hitting and missing the ball. You can choose between the most basic time-based swing interface, time-based with control over the direction of your swing, or complete analog control of the bat. Starting pitcher for the Giants, Jason Schmidt. Pitching is fairly simple as well, letting you choose the pitch and then aim it in or out of the strike zone. This takes a few tries to get the hang of, but on our first attempt, we found it was pretty easy to beat the batter with a wild pitch. That one's got to hurt. The area where MLB nice 2005 looks strong, like it would be most improved is in the here. graphics. The redesigned players are a definite improvement, appearing much more detailed and colorful on the field, although they all fidget about like they have to use the potty. The animations are also much better with new motion-captured movements that are lifelike and transition naturally between each action. This makes the interaction of the double play all the more exciting to watch. See? The crowd is doing the tomahawk. MLB 2005 also includes many small details to recreate the visual experience of being at a game, including a fly-through of the outside of each stadium. The real test, of course, will come when gamers have a chance to dig into a full season, and if they're still listening, on Game 162. We'll have a full review for you soon. Ichiro makes the play. Now here's one not so good thing about MLB 2005. It has a franchise mode, 
that you can't play. You just sort of watch the games play themselves. And now, it's time for viewer mail. So today's viewer mail is from Evan in Newark, Ohio. He writes, one of my favorite games is Sam and Matt. Was wondering if you guys know of any plans for a sequel or re-release. Bad news, Evan. Are Lucas you? Arts has scrapped the Sam and Max sequel. I'm very upset about oh. this. Oh, I'm sorry, Adam. And maybe going to our website will make you feel better. Yeah, and you know where it is? It's at techtv.com slash play. That's, That's it. Right. And you know, while you're there, you can check out our viewer mod. Yes, we're letting you, the fans, say which reviews you want to see, which clothes you want us to wear, how badly I'm going to be abused, if I'm going to live or die. Everyone loves me, so go there now to do that. And thank you to John Cleese for joining oh. us on the show. We really appreciate that. He's my hero. Yes, he is a hero. It's and my funny sit. Kind of mine, too. Do you want to play some Yeah, let's, let's, let's play some of this and get over my stars. Yes. Oops.